Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Stephen Gorsuch and I'd like to welcome you to CMU and the Department of Biology. For many of you, this is your first semester here on campus and for others of you, you may have been on campus for a few semesters already. Regardless, I'd like to spend a little bit of time introducing you to the Department of Biology and of course to the course, Biology 111, that you're taking this semester with me. Again, my name is Dr. Stephen Gorsuch. You can call me Dr. Gorsuch, you can call me Steve, either are acceptable, whatever you're most comfortable with. Here's some of my contact information, my email address, where my office is located. My office is in the main biology office on the second floor of the Biosciences Building. There's uh, two numbers here you can reach me at. My office number is listed here, as well as my mobile number. If you send me a text on my mobile number, always make sure that you indicate your name and that you're emailing me regarding Biology 111, or maybe it's about some other kind of advising you need. As we get started, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our foundational core sequences. So if you're a biology major or thinking about being a biology major, these are the first five courses that you'll take. The first course, which you're in this semester right now, is Biology 111, Foundations of Evolution and Diversity. And we'll spend a quite a bit of time talking about that in just a moment. The next courses in sequence are Foundations of Cell Biology, Foundations of Genetics, Foundations of Form and Function, and Foundations of Ecology. Now, if you're going to sign one of our biology concentrations, then you'll we'll need to take all five of these courses. For some of you, you just need to take Biology 111 for what you need. And for others, you might end up taking the first three, 111, 112, and 211. Some majors across campus require these first three courses. However, I would encourage you to go ahead and take these next two, Biology 212 and 213, even if you don't need them for your major. And the reason I say that is it's just two more courses and then you'll have your biology minor wrapped up. And you're already almost there anyhow after these first three courses. Next, I'd like to spend a little bit of time introducing you to the different concentrations we have within the biology department and the different kinds of majors that you can sign. So now I'd like to spend just a little bit of time talking about the three different concentrations we have within the biology degree. Regardless of which concentration you focus in on, you would still graduate with your bachelor's of science in biology, but with one of three different concentrations. The first here is biomedical cell and molecular biology. So if you're interested in entering into one of these health professions, like becoming a medical doctor, a dentist, a veterinarian, optometrist, pharmacist, physician assistant, or maybe you're interested in getting involved in research as a biomedical researcher, a neurobiologist, a geneticist, a cell biologist, a molecular biologist, one of many different kinds of research biologists, then this would be the major for you. I should mention here as we're looking at these pictures that these are all pictures within our research facilities at CMU and they show students who have gone through our program and some faculty members as well. The next concentration in biology is ecology, evolution, and conservation biology. So if you're interested in a career in ecology, plant and animal biology, fisheries, wildlife biology, animal behavior, limnology, which is the study of lakes, conservation biology, Great Lakes biology, systematics, and climate change biology, then this would be the major for you. And again, as was on the previous slide, these are all pictures of undergraduate and graduate students doing research in one of our many different biology labs. All of these sites are at regional sites, or in some cases, they're out of the state, or in other cases, out of the country. For instance, the one down here, this is a picture of a research group that goes to Antarctica. So let me talk about our third concentration. This concentration is our microscopy concentration. So if you're interested in a career in microscopy, biotechnology, and maybe work in a hospital or research laboratory or a forensics lab, or maybe a government lab or pharmaceutical company, then this is the major for you. Students in this major, as you see here in these pictures here, gain valuable experiences working in our microscopy suite. Students in this major learn valuable skills in working with scanning and electron microscopes, confocal mic microscopes, and light microscopes. Students who walk out with a degree in microscopy walk out with some very tangible skills and ready to find a job. Now, regardless of which concentration you focus in on during your studies in biology, you're going to learn more than just the facts and content presented to you in a classroom. You're also going to develop many different skills. 
You're going to learn how to work in a team. You're going to develop leadership skills. You're going to learn how to look at data and analyze those data. You'll also develop communication skills, oral and written. You'll develop strong problem solving skills and you'll become a critical and creative thinker. You'll also learn valuable quantitative and information literacy skills. While you're working on your biology major, you'll have many different opportunities. You'll have opportunities to do independent research with biology faculty. If you're working in someone's lab, you'll have an opportunity to present your research either at local, regional, national, or international meetings. You also have opportunities to network with experts in your field. These experts might work in industry, like pharmaceutical companies. They might work within government agencies or other various agencies at the local and state level. While working towards your degree, it's also important to be involved with specific registered student organizations. You'll often refer you will often hear these referred to as RSOs. There are many RSOs across campus, but you should consider at least one RSO within the biology department if you're going to be a biology major. The Tri Beta National Honor Society, this is just for biology majors who have done well in their coursework. The Wildlife Society, Pre-Medicine and Osteopathic Society, if you're interested in going to medical school. Pre-Dental Society, if you're interested in becoming a dentist. And Pre-Optometry Club, if you're interested in becoming an optometrist. Pre-Physician Assistant Club, if you plan to become a PA, and Pre-Veterinary Club, if you're planning to become a veterinarian. You'll learn as you're going through college that it's not just going to classes and learning the valuable content and skills you get from the coursework. You also need to make some of these connections, either by working in someone's research facilities, gaining clinical experiences, either on campus or outside of campus, and being involved in student organizations. Now that I've explained to you all the different things that you'll have an opportunity to study and focus on with a biology degree, I'd like to take just a brief moment to tell you how exciting of a time it is right now to study biology and to become a biologist. We are living in the age of biology. We are, of course, experiencing the current COVID-19 pandemic, but there will be other pandemics coming after this one. Conservation biology is also becoming increasingly more important as we see many different species becoming endangered. As we'll learn in this class, we are currently living in one of the great extinction events. This current extinction era that we're living in is in part brought on by global climate change, which I highlight here in the right corner. This is another reason why having strong biologists during this time is increasingly more important. Over the past couple decades, we've sequenced many genomes of many different organisms. We've sequenced the human genome, and we now know that by having that human genome sequence, we can now look into the future of personalized medicine. It's also an exciting time to be a biologist because of our understanding of the very systems within our body, including the nervous system. With an aging population, more and more people are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. We also have an increasingly better understanding of syndromes like autism. Infectious disease and understanding the microbiomes of systems is also important, not just because of things like global pa pandemics, but infectious disease experts are always going to be important. And so living in this global community that we do live in, understanding and being able to treat infectious diseases is also increasingly important. As our populations are growing throughout the world, understanding agriculture and the security that's associated with ag agriculture is important. Understanding our genomes has led to a better understanding and the treating of certain genetic diseases. And in the end, as we have learned over the past almost two years, that there is this critical interface between science and society. It's important that science and society interact with each other so that we can make effective policies. It's also important that science and society interact so that we can teach people, either in a classroom, like you've seen this picture here on the bottom right, or maybe it's teaching our family, our friends, and other peers certain scientific phenomena so that they have a better understanding of some of these problems that our world is facing. So again, a great time to start studying biology as a student 
and ultimately to become a biologist. All right, I'd like to spend a little bit of time now talking about the course that you're in, Biology 111, Foundations of Evolution and Diversity. The big take home point is that we're gonna learn the basic principles of evolution and the application of these principles to the history and diversity of life. As we developed the curriculum for our biology majors, we really felt this was the best course to start with because the foundation of all of biology is the understanding of evolution. So if you're going to begin to learn the importance of biology, you have to start with evolution because evolution is the one topic in all of biology that unites all other within biology. Certainly in this course, we're gonna learn biological concepts related to evolution and diversity of life. But we're also gonna spend some time talking about how biology interacts with society. You're gonna learn how it is that biologists think and do their job. You're gonna learn how to analyze and interpret data. In addition, in this course, you're gonna learn 